Okay, so in the insect world, there's not a whole lot going on, but I want to call attention to, in your packet, there's a handout on aphids. Dennis had uh, had some questions about aphids a couple of weeks ago, so I kind of threw, threw that together. I'm pretty sure you're not going to have to treat for aphids because stripe rust pretty much wipes out the foliage that they feed on, so it turns out that's a control for aphids. Um, the other thing is we have a tendency with uh, high management wheat to kind of, if you're going to go over the field with a fungicide, that idea of just throwing a, an insecticide in the uh, tank. And I think we're reaping what we sow from doing that because this year especially, every year I talk about how cereal leaf beetle is just creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And I've had a lot of questions, more questions than ever about cereal leaf beetle. I've seen them in the field more readily and some of the extension agents have said the exact same thing. So cereal leaf beetle is a pest, it's kind of interesting. It was introduced, it, it came into Michigan first in the entire United States in like the 1950s in Berrien County. And the response to it was done in Michigan right away. And uh, as a pest, it was devastating early on as it feeds the larva's kind of a slug-like larva. It gets up on that flag leaf and it scrapes it so that the field eventually looks kind of white. The response that the US government did was bring a whole bunch of parasitoids over. So cereal leaf beetle has been controlled by parasitoids successfully for many, many years, until it seems like maybe the last five or 10 years as it's beginning to creep up. Now, I don't know if that has something to do with warmer winters and something to do with the parasitoids not being at the right time frame as when the larvae are, are, are there, but I suspect instead it has to do more with throwing that insecticide in the tank. And the more that you do that, for just whatever reason, there's really not a lot of other insects out there to kill. If you, if you have armyworm and you need to kill armyworm, then for sure spray. Or if you had aphids over threshold, which you don't, but let's say that you did. But if you just are gonna throw insecticide in, in the tank for no reason, just to clean up the, uh, the field, you're getting rid of all of those parasitoids that are out there. They would all be susceptible to the pyrethroids that you would throw into the tank. You're also wiping out natural enemies for armyworm, and there's a lot of them out there, and for aphids. So in, in this bulleted on the second page, not only are you wiping out the natural enemies for cereal leaf beetle, and they would not be there the next year if you had wheat, wheat as, an, as a crop is producing the natural enemies that move into soybean and corn later in the season. So when we used to have soybean aphid problems, some of those ladybugs and other <coughs> beneficial insects were being produced in the wheat field and then moving into your soybean field later. So there's a lot of good reasons not just to, to not use an insecticide on wheat unless you have to. If it's justified, sure, use it. But don't be tempted by that $3, throw it into the tank kind of thing because you're not necessarily seeing the effects of that that you are getting in the next couple of years when you have reduced bi biological control. So that's all that I really wanted to say. There is armyworm in the southern part of the state, but it primarily seems to be more like armyworm in corn. I have not had any reports of armyworm infested wheat. It, it, there, there could be some, but I just haven't had any, any calls.